I think there's a big misconception about marriage. You hear people say very often, like when they associate marriage with like um, a part of their life, they go, well, marriage is hard. Marriage is, is really hard. And I think Raj and I did that are always like, that's where you're actually wrong. Like, mar- like Raj and I always say, it's so funny. It's like everything else in life is hard. Like we're mm-hmm. the easy part. Yeah. Like your husband and wife, that should be where you come home and you're like, it's like mm-hmm. your safe person. It's your easy, let your guard down, just be you. Like that should be the thing that's the most effortless thing in your life. It should never be the challenge. The minute mm-hmm. it's the challenge, I think that's where you have to like take a step back because this is your right. forever, right? Yeah. <laughs> well. So not that it doesn't have like ups and downs because of course it does. Any relationship mm-hmm. does, yeah. but you know, I just don't think it should well, be that hard. It's very, I, I come from my parents. Parents are still together. My parents are still together. So I'm just always in awe and envious um, of, of that. So kudos to you. It should never be overlooked um, because it is, especially in the world that you guys live in, you yeah. know, to have that anchor that keeps you and you, you know, you said it, he lets you be you and you let him be mm-hmm. him. So it's a beautiful yeah beautiful relationship. Um, but with that, let me ask, because I am so intrigued and I was dying to just talk to you with how much you juggle, with how much you have your hands in. And my gosh, fashion, social media, I mean, on Bravo back in the day, um, <laughs> now wallpaper, all of that. I mean, I was <laughs> sending links of it to my sister today because I was like, You're this so is so cute. good for you, for your apartment. And just to give you some life, you know who else is in wallpaper and did my house in Montana? Yep. Samantha Phipps and wallpaper. <laughs> She it just changes mm-hmm. your life. But before we get to that, I have to ask you, w- Rachel, with you involved in so much, and I don't know how you operate in terms of, I have so many ideas and I have so many things. I am trying really hard in my marriage, almost at five years, woohoo, um, to <laughs> stay present and be where your feet yeah. are and give him the time he needs, yeah. especially when I'm not during my season. How do you do that with your marriage, with your kids? What do you do? Well, Okay. So here's the thing. Um, you know, we just launched our second venture fund and I think, you know, my biggest thing that I've become really obsessed with over the last year or two is really having my hands in a lot of different businesses and really Mm -hmm. like consulting, advising, investing. Um, and I think all the other things, like you mentioned the wallpaper and fragrance and all these other things, I'm, it's weird. I'm a creative person. I'm definitely a creative person. I've been my whole life before I even knew it. Um, and I think when you're a creative person, there's this, um, kind of like this ticking thing in your body that like explodes if you're not stimulated. Right. And you have to like project that creativity on everything you do. And so for example, okay, I'm just going to say like my office, right? Yeah. I must re-merch and restyle these shelves like twice a week. Like I'll just be on the phone with someone and stand up and start like re-styling books and things Carissa, like that. Carissa, you're dying. You love it. And, mm-hmm. it. and so I think, I think to that extent, I think my career for me, I've never planned any of it. Not my books. Everything I ever said no to, I did. I was like, oh God, no, I'd never write a book. I don't even read books. Who has time? You know, and... <laughs> And, you know, and TV shows, like I'm never letting anyone in my life, like all those things. But I think there's a time and a place. And I've definitely always been governed by my gut instinct for things. And when opportunities come, it's not always the right time. It's not always the right um, people that you want to do business with. And I think those things kind of pull you into things. Now, becoming a mom and and much later in life, by the way, um, I mean, Roger and I, we, Roger and I, we're together, brace yourself. Yeah. It, when I tell people this out loud, it sounds crazy. We were together for 18 years before we had children. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> I remember, I remember that, but I remember you got, and again, because your life was out there right. with, yeah, with, your, with your show, it, it was weird. Not weird. That's not no, the right no, way It was, well, no, it was just, <laughs> you were, you were just this like dynamo and continue to be right with like the business side. And Aaron and I have talked about this for a long time. Yeah. Like, when is the right time to have kids or how it's going to disrupt my business? And so then when you, you know, to think now with your children, like 
who knew what your life looked like before those boys, right? Yeah, because now totally. they're your whole world. And so yep. when is that right time to shift up and, and what what made it change for you guys and decide like, hey, we need to do this and we want time. to do this now? Time. time, time, really time. Because, you know, it's a weird thing because I was this weird hybrid of a completely career obsessed perfectionist workaholic for my whole adult life. Mm -hmm. Those types of people are not typically people that you say, oh, she's going to be a mom. She needs mm -hmm. to be a mom, you know? Mm -hmm. But weirdly, since I was 16, 15, I was always called like mom Zo or, you know, I was always the mom. I was always the mm -hmm. one taking care of everybody. I was always the one, you know, just I was the shoulder they cried on. I was the ear. I was the this. It was all those things. And then when all my friends started having children, it was funny because I'd be the one adult that was invited to kids' birthdays that had no kids. And I would be the one out there playing with 25 kids while all the parents <laughs> were like drinking wine. In an and amazing flowing gown, mm -hmm. yeah. a designer <laughs> gown as she's out there like, seriously, Blue balloon animals. Effortless. I, was I was definitely in heels. I was definitely, <laughs> but it was weird. So this, I was very, very conflicted because I knew in my soul that I had to be a mother because I loved children. I loved them. What I couldn't solve for was how in God's name I was going to have time to do that. And I was like, how? I don't even have time to shower. I sleep four hours a night. You know what I mean? Like I'm, yeah. I'm living the most ridiculous life. And then, um, as you may have seen on the show, but um, I got very sick in 2009 mm -hmm. and I, I got vertigo that was debilitating for about a year. Yeah. And ultimately, like your body sometimes makes decisions and just says, you know what? Guess what? Just kidding. You can't live like this anymore. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I would tribute it to say I was probably collapsing of sorts from exhaustion, you know. And then Raj and I, one day we were just like, oh, God. I'm getting old. Like I really <laughs> kind of need to do this. And what do we do? You know, it was sort of like, how do I get a baby? It was sort of yeah, like, right. how do I do this? Right. I mean, yeah. Where do we start? My head around mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And I got pregnant. Re Honestly, it's funny. I was pregnant for nine weeks before I even realized I was pregnant Wow. because we weren't trying. We weren't not trying, but we we're trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just working. And then I just remember finding out I was pregnant in the summer of like 2010. And I just remember like, you know, those pregnancy tests, you take them and it takes like, you know, it takes like a minute to see what color, what, what, what plus sign yeah. or whatever. And there's like four of them in a box. Girls, I took four of them. <laughs> they took five seconds to come up with the answer. It was like, you it's like are you were strong. <laughs> <laughs> like, These are not wrong. There was no, oh. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. My luck, I'd be like, is that another line? Is it not a line? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. So oh, there was, was no, so it looks crooked. It was. Yeah. I was confused. So, but the truth is, you guys, I remember taking this hospital tour when I was like eight and a half months pregnant. And I remember at Cedars and I left the hospital and I got in the car and I go, nope, can't do it. And Roger really? goes, he goes, what are you talking about? I <laughs> we, go, we're doing he goes, it. Like, he goes, do you want a C-section? I go, no, no, I, I, I can't do that. I, I'm freaking out. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know how to give birth. He's like, nobody knows how to give birth. I'm like, you can't say a word about this. You're just going to stand there like looking at me. And, you know, I was, I was in a full panic. Like I could have stayed pregnant for like five years. Like that was fine. <laughs> 